Okay, so first things first, we get rid of the default cube and we put in our references that we stole from Google. Um, I'm making use of the top view since the roulette has most detail from the top and I get another one which is a bit of a perspective view so <clears throat> I get a better idea of the proportions and uh, how it should look like the final render. Um, uh, the first thing I add in is a simple circle uh, and uh, from there I decide to give it the amount of edges which is to give the same amount of edges as the numbers on the uh, roulette which is 37 so then later I can align them it would be easier for me to uh, model the um, uh, each each and each one uh, from uh, so what I'm doing now I'm creating uh, edge loops uh, loop cuts that go around the circle as you could see I'm creating uh, indentations in the uh, circle itself right now all you can see is the wireframe which uh, is a mode for uh, you to view your model I'm using the wireframe so I can still see the reference underneath from now but uh, later you will see like see that is the solid uh, viewport that was only for a few seconds <laughs> but will be on eventually and you could see what I mean um, uh, all right another thing that's important when creating your image is the 3d cursor which is the small uh, dot with uh, red and white lines around it that is used for you to uh, indicate where you want to add stuff and a bunch of other things honestly but the most basic and most important thing to know about the 3d cursor is uh, when you're going to add an element into your scene it's going to be added exactly there so uh, what i'm doing now let me see exactly I'm uh, putting the 3d cursor to be exactly in the middle of my scene so that uh, when I add in these uh, dividers which they're going to be dividers that stop the ball from going from a number to the other uh, it is added into the center you will see soon why um, uh, for when I'm going to do the other ones I'm not gonna do them by eye obviously I am uh, going to move their origin to the uh, 3d cursor which you will see soon enough uh, but before that this is quite important um, uh, it's called bevel where uh, you grab an edge and from that edge you can add more faces so it gives it a curved look um, uh, we use that we use the bevel as well for when we're using a subdivision modifier to create sharp edges which you will see soon as well uh, so now what i did i moved the object's origin to the uh, cursor which at, for, at the start I had uh, had it in the very center of my scene so what I'm doing now is I'm just duplicating the divider and just rotating it around um, okay I, it's time to talk about the uh, tools for editing your uh, your objects um, uh, the most basic and important tools that you will need are the grab tool, scale, extrude and uh, rotate. Uh, their shortcuts are very easy to understand. It's their first letter so if it's, you want to grab something you press G. Um, uh, 
scale is S, I rotate is R, and extrude is E. Um, talking about extrude, you can see it right now uh, where I'm doing the middle part. Uh, I created a circle first and extruded the face to give it a uh, extrusion. <laughs> I don't think there's a better word than that. Uh, anyways, I'll shut up for a second so you can see how I uh, very easily created the uh, middle part. Now, um, uh, you, I need to talk about the subdivision modifier, which is a very common uh, modifier that is used within Blender. Uh, to understand modifiers, they're a bit like... Um, uh, how can I explain it? In Photoshop, you have uh, filters and... Uh, all that stuff these are just the same thing but for 3d elements the subdivision modifier rounds everything um, uh, sometimes you want it sometimes you don't now what I'm doing right now is I'm selecting the edges that I want them to be uh, sharp not rounded uh, what I do after selecting those I press ctrl B which is the uh, bevel tool as the same one as we've, we've seen before and I add um, just one or two faces that are tiny so when I add the subdivision modifier now um, it will look um, uh, straight like an edge while the rest is rounded So once you're happy with your model, uh, you would want to uh, color it. And there are different ways to give color to your model. Uh, one of the most used ways is uh, using a UV map. But before you could do that, uh, you need to show Blender um, uh, how to apply the UV map to your model. Um, the problem is because the UV map is going to be either a JPEG or a PNG, which is a 2D flat image, and you need to project that on a 3D model. Uh, to do that, um, you need to use scenes on your model, which shows Blender where they need to uh, cut the model when uh, unwrapping your uh, your UV map um, uh, you could do that by either holding ctrl E and uh, you could uh, export the uh, vertices into a PNG and open it into uh, Photoshop or anything that you have that could edit images
Okay, so we got that UV map trouble out of the way. Now uh, we got to take care of the spindle in the middle, which uh, is metallic. A UV map is not going to help. Uh, so what do we do? We use materials. Um, uh, in this case, I want it to look metallic, which is pretty straightforward. So I select the thing in the middle and give it like full metallic and uh, reduce the roughness a bit so it shines but not mirror like uh, and I guess it looks looks good enough I, uh, looking back on it I could have added some uh, specular which, which which would have made it shinier but uh, I think I think it's 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 good enough for what it is uh, well, to explain like the most uh, values I use in uh, the materials tab would be the metallic, as we've seen here, the specular, which is the shiny shininess, uh, roughness, makes it look more plasticky, and uh, subsurface, uh, which makes the material look a bit translucent, like uh, skin or uh, anything similar something that is quite amazing to use um, uh, uh, is using uh, HDRIs in, into your work which it's, it's, it's these these uh, panoramic photos that uh, give all the lighting information and make it really easy to create a more realistic image within Blender without you having to play around with too many uh, lights uh, I've, I've downloaded a couple from polyhaven.com which is a great great site to uh, look into if you're into 3d 3d work um, uh, and as you can see i've decided to give it a bit of a lively um, uh, bright light and uh, well now we just move on to the rendering there are two types of rendering um, they're in Blender. We have uh, EV and Cycles. Uh, what you need to know, EV is fast but lacks detail. Um, uh, this mode is used for wireframe, solid and material. Uh, cycles is used um, for rendering uh, images and animations. It makes it much more nicer, trust me. Uh, okay, I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>